New player action now between Jay Laredo at the top of the screen and Matt Powell at the bottom. Uh, you can see Matt enters this as one of the leaders with 26 points. Uh, Jay's still in striking distance with 14. He, need, he needs to have a good showing here. There was a few technical issues with this recording at the start in the standard match, but we can still watch. I'll explain as we go along. Matt Powell is on uh, this deck that seems to be pretty popular in the New Players League at the moment, which is a mono black control. Jay on the other side, you can see the white there. Um, he's going to be on Saprolines. Normally we see Saprolines as uh, green black, but Jay's made it into a uh, into Abzan. As you can see, the video just skips slightly. We're going to see uh, Slimefoot the Stowaway. This was, when this was spoiled, everybody was um, was. <coughs> running this card, uh, testing this card with um, EDH, it's a, it's, it's a good uh, EDH commander. As cast down is not going to take down Slimefoot because Slimefoot is legendary. Uh, so he's changed it, he's going to actually target a Saprolene here. This is kind of awkward because you look, uh, Slimefoot, and this is a problem with these mono black decks that we saw previously. And again, you can see here the video skips ahead, so he's got a Metallic Mimic now. Uh, Josu Vess is going to come in. Yeah, and you can see two Demon Lord Belzenox. Um, as I just skip forward a little bit here, we're going to go to game two because game one was just mucked up. You can see it's running much more smoothly now. Not sure what the issue was there. Encoding issue on the other side, I'm guessing. But Metallic Mimic comes down. Uh, it will name Saprolene, I'm sure. Yes, he did. Gifted Aetherborn on the other side of the table. So... The, two Mimics naming Saprolene, so there's a Bontu's Last Reckoning, but no third land drop for Matt Powell. I can tell you that that, that first game, I, um, Jay Laredo took the first match because um, Matt stumbled on land, so Matt's trying to recover here. But two, three Metallic Mimics, this is going to be nuts once he starts pumping out uh, if, if there's a third land, you can see two Bontu's Last Reckonings there. If he finds a third land, this is going to be gross. <coughs> but you can see Jay, uh, Jay's saying in, in chat, I've got no green. So he can't actually... There it is right there, just as he says it. <laughs> he says, never mind, just got one. I, I can't believe he's gone for the... He, he's waiting for the green. Um, are there, and Bontu coming down now. So that's going to wipe away all his gains. Well, let's see what he's got the green for. Slimefoot. Okay, th this Thalid is, if he's going to play it, no, he, he flashed it and then changed his mind. He's going to play it. Spore Crown Thalid, it's a two two mana Lord. Gives other saplings plus one, plus one. And Tender Shoot Dryad. So this is going to start pumping out saplings and this is going to get ugly real quick. And again, he's not mucking around, he'll fire off the second Bontu's Last Reckoning. Yeah, and here's a second Lord, and a Saprolene Migration, which puts two two twos on for two, which is a very good value. Yeah, I, th I think I mentioned earlier in another video, <coughs> as here's Huatli, which goes very well, so that explains the white splash. And uh, Matt had seen enough, so we're going to modern. Yeah, I was just explaining in another video. Uh, standard looks really good right now. Well, this is the... Uh, okay, stomping ground for Jay. Matt Powell's on this deck that we haven't seen for a while. It's um, Ponza. It was very popular when Bloodbraid Elf was first... Uh, s s uh, what's the word? 
when Blood Braid Elf was unbanned, it became very popular and it kind of dropped off the face of the earth. I'm not really sure why. But you can see Wild Growth Walker there. So this is a brew here, Hardened Scales. Uh, so k k kudos points to Jay. We, we I love it when we see players bringing in brews. Chandra not going to muck around, just get that Wild Growth Walker off the battlefield immediately. Chandra's down to one, so if there's any lightning bolts on the other side, he's just dead. But there's not, there's a Kitchen Finks instead. He can actually play Storm Breath Dragon if he wants to here. Storm Breath has protection from... Oh, he's going to go Inferno Titan instead. Okay, that's a nice line as well. So he's going to fire two at the Kitchen Finks and one at Jay. Kitchen Finks is kind of an interesting card. It comes and goes from Modern. It's popular at some points and then it just doesn't get played at others. I know this because I, I play... Um, I generally play green-white company decks. And I'm bringing Kitchen Finks in and out of my decks all the time. It's, it's a very much a metagame call. But it's Inferno Titan doing all the damage here. And I think this one's very quickly after... J took standard two games to zero. This one looks like we're going to game two very quickly in modern. Matt Powell getting the job done here. Is a company in response. But I think it's not going to be good enough. Oh, he's got... Actually, he can take down a Titan here. So that, that's actually a pretty good hit to Shana's Wayfinder and Wild Growth Walker. Hardened Scales putting counters on, so... Yeah, he's only going to be able to remove one of those blockers. What's he going to do? He's going to take down the Wild Growth Walker, which is the correct choice. He's got, but uh, Jay's got another one to play out anyway. <coughs> yeah, this Ponza deck that he's playing, he's, he's got a third Titan now. This Ponza deck that he's playing is actually one I'm seriously considering taking to GP uh, SCG Philadelphia for the team event if I play the, the modern portion, which I'm hoping to. Modern's my favorite format. So you can see here, he's going to hit three damage to, to Shana. The other Titan is going to swing in and it does three damage when it swings in. So it'll remove Tashana as a blocker before combat. By the way, the issue here with the recording where the lands are sort of cut off at the top, this is to do with Matt Powell's um, recording. It's the way he has his X-Mage set up. So it's nothing on, not, not on my side. And we're going to go to game two here. I don't see what he um, Jay can possibly find when he's at three life to beat two Inferno Titans. Yep, game two. One card we haven't seen just yet as um, Blood Moon so he chooses to play the Kitchen Finks out first uh, I like their play because he can play Tyler's Tracker and then play the Stomping Ground next <coughs> or if he wants to he can also um, Play Blood Braid Elf.
So he's going to go Blood Braid Elf instead. And he finds a tracker anyway. So on the other side of the board with Jay's this homebrew is straight up green red by the looks of it. Um, I'm, I'm waiting to see what he plays in terms of removal spells. You'd assume he's probably got four lightning bolts because this tireless track is going to start running away with this match pretty soon. And he, here's one issue with the land destruction. Okay, so he's got a Ronus Indomitable. Whenever a creature. Green creatures cost one less, and he can also pump his. Uh, when a creature enters, gets plus two, plus two. Because, uh, uh, as I was saying, Tyler's track is going to run away with this match very quickly, especially with two of them. Well, there's a Trinosphere. This is the first time I've seen this outside of Legacy. It means that all spells will cost three. So he's going to have to get those Arbor Elves on the board first before playing the Trinosphere. Six damage coming through here, drops him to 14. And here's a Blood Braid Elf of his own, what can he find? Triggers, he finds a Jade Light Ranger, trigger, 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 trigger. There are two blockers on the other side, but uh, the Ronus, Monu uh, Ronus Monument actually gives the creature Trample. So that's a 9-11 Trampler. Jade Light Ranger comes in, Trample again. Vizier of the Menagerie, so it's a 13 Trample. It's going to have to be blocked, that's lethal right there. Uh, does he want to block? There's two chump blocks. So he goes to two, so he needs a top deck right now. Kitchen Finks ain't going to save him, and neither is that Chandra, so we're going to game three here. Wild Growth Walker very quickly becomes a 7-9, which is uh, too big to deal with. Okay, he can chump block the Wild Growth Walker, but any creature will give it trample and of course we saw that off the top from the explore trigger with the J Light Ranger so we're going to game three. Vizier of the Menagerie. Well there's a bit of a nombo here because I'm seeing Blood Braid Elves and Viziers which are four mana and we also saw Collected Company so either he has no removal in this deck or uh, he doesn't have many company hits. And Stone Rain on turn two is going to mean that he's got one, two. He's got access to five mana already while Jay's still sitting on one. Going to keep up the land destruction. And this is how this deck rolls. He's just got to find a threat now. You can see Jay with seven cards in hand, but he can't do anything. Yeah, that's that's his only out is to have um, have fetches and don't crack them until you need them. Our wooded foothills to go with his tracker. This is going to get ugly quickly. So he's cracked it. So he's got something. It's a wild growth walker. Now I think I missed something there. What? Oh, okay. He, yeah. There's a bit of a lag spike. He actually played a um, gut shot to take down the armor elf. So he's going to get two clues from the tracker here.
Inferno Titan, so that that's the if he needed a win con he's just found it. J down to eight with two lands in play. And Inferno Titan's gonna remove that wild growth walker. I think this is it. Yeah, Jay's gonna concede now, so we're gonna go to Legacy. And this is a popular deck, but no lands, he can't keep that hand. You can see this is a, a Matt Powell's um, signature, is that Sin Prodder. That's a super risky hand, he's, he's relying on hitting a second land so he can exile with the Simeon Spirit Guide. If he hits a second land, very nice. Or if there's a Force of Will on the other side, very bad. But there's a basic mountain, a Lotus Petal, two Lotus Petals, three Lotus Petals. Okay, one's a Mishra's Bauble. And a Grindstone. Okay, so this this is the Legacy deck popularized in our league by Lorenzo Soma. It's the Painter's Servant deck. Well, I don't like that play at all. Exiling Simeon Spirit Guide to play Chalice for one. Um, the grindstone is already out. I believe Painter's Servant costs three. And also he needed to find a win con, so, um, either the Sin Prodder or the Goblin Rabble Master had to come down. Blood Moons are going straight out, so will Magus of the Moon. Oh, okay, so Painter's Servant is two. So Jay's going to win this match next turn. He needs to remove that Painter's Servant right now. He cannot do it. Oh wait, Fiery Confluence. No, he can't do it. So f g game one is going to Jay Laredo. He's going to mill Matt Powell. And game two now. You'd, you'd think the first card's out with the Blood Moons. So, Jay got standard two games to zero. Matt fought back and took modern two games to zero. Was it two games to one? Yeah, two games to one, sorry, in modern. And so we're, we're pretty much even. Uh, Jay entered this match 12 points down. So if he can take Legacy, he can slightly cut the gap. There's the first part of the combo, the Painter's Servant. Okay, we, we want to see Sin Prodder. Play Sin Prodder, please. He needs another land to be able to do it. I think I would have taken Chalice out. You can see he's got three Chalices there. Uh, they just do nothing. He's got the Chalice on one to stop the combo. But... Um, Okay, here's Cough and Legacy. We don't see that too often. Matt down to 13. Still not hitting those lands, so big problems now. Ratchet Bomb. Well, I think... I'm always confused if these XX mana costs. It's not going to matter because uh, he's going to be dead next turn. He's, he's got, I think he's got to play Pierre and Kieran here. That'll buy him at least a turn. Um, Ratchet Bomb. I'm always confused if these XX mana costs. So I don't, I don't know if he cracks the Ratchet Bomb for zero to remove those chalices or if he has to crack it for one but the ratchet bomb will get rid of the thopters okay just answered so both chalices are zero and he can go for the combo if he has it now three cards in hand there's an imperial recruiter so he's going to find creature of power to less
gets a Durga Hedge Mage. And it's an artifact destruction spell. So here comes more damage. He's going to go to three. He's dead on board next turn, so he needs something right now. Ratchet Bomb won't do it. He could play a Chump Blocker. But I think he's, we might see a concession here. This kind of seems inevitable. Yep, he's going to concede. And so Jay strikes back to take it by five points. 